Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was seen in these viral photos crying and looking sad, but it was a weird plasticky kind of fake sad if you were to ask me. Then photos emerged showing her looking, they, they, they showed the full frame and you can see it was just like a road and it was facetiously referred to as just a parking lot. Fact-checking organization PolitiFact says this is false. Why? Because it was a toll plaza. What? I believe it was Scott Adams who said that we're all watching, you know, the same screen, but there's two different movies playing for us. People see different things. Yesterday, I made a video addressing some of my concerns about the left. It was made in response to a video from David Pakman, which I, I recommend both videos, both mine and his. Check it out. It's on this channel. In this, I show a, a graph where the left predominantly gets their news from only left-wing sources, whereas moderates and conservatives have a balance of both. And surprisingly, conservatives get just over 35 or so percent of their news from liberal sources. Moderates get uh, a little bit more than half of their news from liberal sources, and then a little bit less than half from moderate sources. I'm, f I'm sorry, from conservative sources. So here's what I think happens. There are two, two movies being played. I'm sitting in between the left and the right, and I'm asking them, like, what do you see? And then going interesting, and then trying to convey, like, what's being said in a rational way to those who aren't watching the movie at all, or are on either side. Now, what we can see in the culture war is that I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to pretend. The left is hostile. They're very hostile. Conservatives love arguing. They love debating. They want to go on. They, they beg for interviews. Let me come on. I will refute your ideas. I will challenge you. And the left says, let me get permission first, or I'm not going to do it. That makes it really hard to tell a left-wing individual, here's what's playing for the right. Here's what you're not seeing. Moderates can see it because moderates do get most of their news from left-wing sources, but still a decent amount from conservatives. So they're like, oh, I get it. So here's, here's the reason I bring this up. PolitiFact's fact-checking is ridiculous, okay? They take everything so literally. I wonder how they function in the real world. Let me tell you something really interesting about like machine learning and artificial intelligence. I read this really great passage. It was from, a, from this book on like technology and quantum physics. And they said, one of the things that AI lacks today, sort of, it's getting better, is assumptions, the ability to make an assumption. So the best example is when you need to drive a screw into a piece of wood, what do you do? You take the screw, you take your screwdriver, you eyeball it, depending on what you're doing. I mean, you want to measure twice, cut once, they say, right? But, but let's say you just want to put a screw in. So you, you find a good place, you push the screwdriver in, and you just push it and twist. And then eventually the screw's in, it's tight, you feel good about it. How many calculations did you do? How much math did you do? Not that much at all. In fact, what you really did was make a ton of assumptions. Now, when a computer or a machine has to do it, everything has to be perfectly precise. To what degree, you know, to what range does the, does the screwdriver ever go up? How, mu how many rotations? How much force? There's a, a ton of calculations in, in this. So interestingly, and, and trust me, this, I have a point. There was a really uh, interesting development recently where they said an AI couldn't beat the game Magic the Gathering because there were too many variables. The computers couldn't make enough assumptions. They had to calculate every possible path. And that leads to the inability to play the strategy. If you're not familiar with Magic the Gathering, it's a card strategy game. It's, it's fantasy-based for the most part. And it's basically like you and your friends are, are battling. And it's like, uh, the best way to describe it, chess and poker combined. Well, AI couldn't do it because it didn't have the ability to see the nuance, the context, and make assumptions. It has to literally calculate everything precisely. This is why I wonder, how do these people function when they take everything so damn literally, they can't understand the actual idea being conveyed. And this is a really good point to bring up when we talk about how the left can't meme. Memes are pocket-sized ideas, okay? So take, for instance, one I, I often cite is Trump saying Pocahontas. Many people on the left are offended by it. They, they see it, it's, a, it's a racial slur. But when Trump says Pocahontas, the idea being conveyed, the memory highlighted in the brains of those who can hear it, isn't just an insult. It represents everything Elizabeth Warren did, from her, her bar, uh, you know, her license or whatever that said Native American, to being labeled a Native American. Trump has condensed that whole story down into a single word that he can invoke every time he says her name. It's, it's very effective memeing. Trump knows how to do this. Take, for instance, like, you'll see a lot of memes from, like, it'll, it'll say um, a clip from The Office, 
People know what happened in the office. They understand the context. So when the meme is presented in a political context, people immediately say something like, I totally get the idea you're trying to convey. We're not literally talking about the office. We're talking about the idea that was in the episode. So the point I'm making with the AI and all this, when we look at this story from the Daily Wire, they say PolitiFact fact check on AOC crying in front of an empty parking lot is utterly hilarious. Here's what they say. No, this isn't a photo of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez crying over a parking lot. Because they go on to say that essentially it was a toll plaza, but she was actually crying about the camp on the other side. Well, well, no, duh, we know that. Do you remember during the debates when Donald Trump said that Hillary Clinton acid washed her server? NBC News put out a fact check saying false. Hillary Clinton did not use a corrosive substance on her computer. And I'm just sitting there like, what? Well, of course she didn't. Trump's using a metaphor. He's just exaggerating. He's saying acid washed. It's, it's a way to describe. In fact, the software used was called bleach bit. Trump was just making a point saying that she aggressively scrubbed her server and they said it was false. And here is the big divide between what the left and the right is today for the most part. Why can't the left meme? Because they don't under like it's a, it's man, I, I'm, I'm going to say it and I know it's going to trigger a lot of people. They're drones. It's robotic. Everything is surface value. This is what it is, period. They can't see beyond the surface. And that's why, in my opinion, we see things like they all want a $15 minimum wage. Well, did you think about what comes next? Okay, it made sense before. I don't think we should get rid of it. I understand why we have it. But automation is at play now. Things have changed. This is why Andrew Yang, a Democrat, opposes it and says we need better solutions. You can't just claim to be on, the, it's like, it's like, for one, I think there's a lot of people who just say they're supporting the minimum wage because Democrats are supposed to. No, you can be on the left and be for sensible policy and, and change your views with technology. They don't. They don't think about what comes next. And this is what we see here. It's like, these people, I, here, here's, here's how I imagine what happens with this fact check. They see uh, 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 so, someone tweet, Ocasio-Cortez crying over a parking lot. Well, parking lot was just meant to be hyperbolic. It was meant to kind of just belittle what she was doing. It was an insult, kind of. It's, it's hyperbole. It's exaggeration. But of course, people know it's not literally a parking lot. It is a toll plaza. It, it, was the, it was the driveway up to the facility. We know the facility was there. These people from PolitiFact see this and they're like, wait a minute. That, that's not a parking lot. There's, there's, there's a camp on the other side. Well, obviously, the point was she, she couldn't see anything, right? Off in the distance were tents and she was crying about it. But what was she looking at that she was crying at? There's nothing there. That's the point. The point was that we think it was fake. You don't have to be. So, so this is what's crazy right now, because, you know, people talk about the left and the right divide. And I think it really comes down to do you have the ability to understand nuance? And so I think this is why it puts me as like a moderate more in line with the worldview of conservatives. And it's why my stories are framed the way they are, even though my opinions differ from conservatives, even though my policy positions differ, I'm paying attention and I can think a few steps ahead. I don't think that's inherent to conservatism and not to liberals. I think whatever happened in these past few years has pushed the people of this mindset to the conservatives and people without this mindset to the left. And I think memes have a lot to do with it. There were a lot of conservatives who got on the meme train quickly and understood how this worked and had fun. This attracts people. Donald Trump understood this. Think about it. When Trump gets on the debate stage and uses like the power of memes and his, and his base does, regular people identify those memes, understand the context and say that makes sense. Regular people then see NBC claim Hillary Clinton didn't use a corrosive chemical on her server and they're like, what? Well, that makes no sense. Remember when someone asked Hillary Clinton, did you wipe your server? She goes, huh, with a cloth? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, like, so, so that was the perfect example of how I, I think Hillary Clinton knew exactly what she was being asked. But that behavior, think about the modern liberal today who really thinks it was a parking lot, like literally completely. There was like, when they heard her say with a cloth, they go, huh, Hillary Clinton didn't wipe her server with a cloth. That's ridiculous. And, and there you go. Those people who can't understand complex thought, make assumptions and reason beyond the literal were attracted to the Democratic Party, at least for now. 
And that's why there's a lot of walk away people, people who can actually question what's happening. So look at this. They say, Cortez said she would never forget that day. It was the moment I saw with my own eyes, the America I love was, what was, uh, with my own eyes that the America I love was becoming a nation that steals refugee children from their parents and caged them. Boy, is she something special. I got to say this. First of all, they're not refugees and stolen. Man, I love the emotional manipulation these people do. And it's another reason. You know what, man? Why they probably will view me and say I'm not left is because I do not play the emotional manipulation game. But I do play the intelligent research game and have found in my research and my and my own personal morals, having grown up the way I did, I've, I, I fall with left wing. I, I fall into the left wing policy for the most part. And, and I, I shouldn't even say for the most part. It's like slightly to the left. And I say it all the time, but it's a point I'm trying to make to differentiate between why we have a left and a right watching different screens. Because the right can see the joke and understand the context and the intent. And the left takes it completely literally. Ricky Gervais brings this up in his episode, his thing with Jerry Seinfeld, where he says, these people believe the joke is my actual opinion. It's actually really fascinating. I think we should do like a study on this, really. Like maybe Pew could, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I should do it. Actually survey people. Because you have all of these different circumstances where we can now see the left-right divide really comes down to, do you understand complex con- uh, uh, complexity, context, intent, hidden meaning, metaphor, or is everything black and white literal? Ricky Gervais makes a joke and they say, you're a transphobe. And he was like, it was a joke. It's not meant to be literal. It's not how I feel. They don't know that. They don't understand this. This is why they're offended by everything. They actually believe it's someone like, like, I'm surprised they don't go after Family Guy. But but, let's read this right here because I want to see what, I want to show you what Politifact says. Critics pounced. Oh, I love when they say that. Posting to social media that the congresswoman was crying over nothing more than a parking lot. Among the stories echoing that sentiment were two shared on Facebook. Both po- Facebook posts were flagged as part of Facebook's effort to combat false news and misinformation on its news feed. We reached out to blah, blah, blah. It isn't a parking lot, Agu- Aguirre said. It's the road leading to the camp. Duh. Duh. Parking lot is called hyperbole. Okay. People were being hyperbolic. They were exaggerating the point to mock Ocasio-Cortez because she wasn't looking at a camp with children. She was looking at a driveway and off in the distance was a camp. And the joke was, the criticism was, you couldn't see what she was looking at before. So people were trying to make it seem like she was looking at children. We knew that wasn't the case. And when the photo emerged that she was crying while holding a chain link fence and just a driveway in front of her, people made fun of her for that. But these people can't understand that. I'm really impressed. Re- I, 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 in an effort to corroborate that claim, we looked at photos and other coverage from that day. Now, it's, it's possible that this is, this is what she was looking at. It's a toll, pl- <laughs> it's a toll plaza. What is, it's a port of entry? What? How is this, how is this refuting? How is this false? They take the literal claim of parking lot and say, well, technically it was a toll plaza. So yes, there were cars parked on the side of the road in a driveway with no children in visible sight, but it's not a parking lot. It seems like it's done politically on purpose often, right? But I, but I will say that when you look at Ricky Gervais' statement, when you look at the outrage culture, when you look at the NBC News fact-checking, when you look at this story, there's probably a political element. Some people know they're covering for Ocasio-Cortez because most people are headline readers and they won't read the, the deeper context. But I really do think whatever it is that is separating the left and the right comes down to an inability to understand context and nuance. And thus, you can see the left saying you're either a Nazi or you're not. It's like, well, dude, there, there's way, 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 way more, pe- like, more political ideologies from here before you get to Nazi, right? Nope, not to them. It's either like you're, you're, you're uh, a liberal or you're a Nazi, period. It's why I think that game Secret Hitler is really funny. I don't know if you've ever played it, but it's hilarious and I absolutely recommend it. I think it was made by like anti-fascist, like anti like, I don't want to say anti but like anti-fascist people. It's, a, it's called a werewolf game where uh, in the beginning of the game, everybody gets a card packet and you're either a liberal or a fascist. And it's part of the reason the game's hilarious because there's, there's so much more that you could be before you're a liberal or a fascist. But anyway, the game's funny because someone is secretly Hitler and you have to figure out who it is. And then everyone, it's a guessing game. Everyone's lying. It's a really great game. I don't care about the politics behind it. Awesome game. Good job. 
it's really fun. But the reason I bring it up is that it's so hilarious they made a game where it's literally like two things you can be, liberal or fascist. And that's the mindset. That's what exists. That's why they say everyone's a fascist, because they don't understand they don't understand what libertarianism is. They don't understand what authoritarianism. All they know is good, bad, black, white. That's it. So when it comes to this, you're either being led by the Pied Piper and you're an idiot, or there is no Pied Piper. And this, this woman, Sierra O'Rourke and Stephanie Posolides, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, don't understand what nuance is. Don't understand that there are shades of gray in life and that black and white is an extreme view. In the end, they give a big false. No, this isn't a photo of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez crying over a parking lot. Thank you for your framing. We understand that. Please get on with, like, please get in on the joke. I, I, perhaps you don't have the ability. So let me clarify to, 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 to end this video. It was a video of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez standing outside of a plaza, which led to a uh, detention center. There was nothing in front of her, just cars. She was crying and it looked fake. She was mocked for that. When it then came out that she was looking at essentially an empty road, people jokingly said she's crying over a parking lot because they were exaggerating the point that she wasn't actually looking at children. She was just standing outside of a parking lot and had no idea what was going, inside, going on inside that camp. For all she knew, they were playing Xbox and eating pizza. That's the point. She wasn't looking at kids and crying. She was looking at nothing. I don't care what you want to call it. She was looking at a road. But you know what? If you don't understand nuance, I won't be surprised when you fall in line and act like the Democrats are doing a good job. So you know what? I'm, the video I'm going to do for, for um, the 4 p.m. segment, I'm going to be going over my view of the Mueller testimony yesterday. I hate doing day late stories like this, but there's a lot to go through. And I, I'm going to say it, you know, the Democrats are losers. They are losers. And I want to stress Obama was a winner. That man had charisma. That man did horrifying things. He was tough and he was bad in a lot of ways, but boy, he was a leader. He was strong. He was tough. He got some things done. He did some really bad things. But the, the reason I bring him up so often in these past few weeks is to highlight the, the contrast, the Democrats of today versus where they were in Obama in, during the Obama era. They don't have it. And I'm not going to back down and shy away from it because I understand there's nuance in this world. So stick around. Next segment will be at 1 p.m. That segment will be at 4 p.m. And I will see you all at 1 p.m. on this channel.